Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, in this session, we will be discussing about the like basic structure of the electrical machine under the initiative of uh, your own teacher community. And like we will provide like uh, project guidance and the basic tutorial on each subject, like each uh, undergraduate and the post postgraduate, uh, like subjects and the projects also. So let us start with our discussion. So if you uh, look into this, like electrical machines is a like a very important subject in the undergraduate and the postgraduate curriculum of the electrical engineering. So it is the core subject of the electrical engineering curriculum. So it is presented in the undergraduate level and the postgraduate level. So we will be first looking into the basic structure. What is the basic structure of the electrical machine? What is inside the course. So if you look into the electrical machine, then the first machine which we will be looking into this is the transformer. So transformer is the core of this electrical machine. So transformer, you, you can see like in your surrounding, you will be finding a lot of like elements from this electrical machines. So transformer are basic, uh, like one of the most important thing of that you will be looking like you can see the transformer around you. So after transformer, we will be discussing the DC machines and these DC machines, maybe it will be DC motor or it will be the DC uh, generator. And uh, uh, apart from this DC machine, after this, we will have uh, induction machine. Uh, generally, we will be using that induction machine as an electrical motor because induction machine uh, is not used as electrical generators. In some cases, we use it as an electrical generator, but most of the cases, we will be using the electrical induction machine as an electrical motor. And when we come on the synchronous machine, then this synchronous machine is also a very important part, but uh, it is uh, mostly used as an electrical generator. So these things we will be covered in the like uh, deep in the whole curriculum, like when we will be discussing in the like complete level, then if we will be discussing like how this synchronous machine uh, is like why we will use this as a electrical generator, not as a motor. So synchronous machine are generally used as the electrical generator, not a electrical motors. In some cases we use it in electrical motors, but uh, most of the cases synchronous machine is used as this electrical generators. And after that we have some special machines. So uh, in a special machine we have like a stepper motor or a reluctance motor, maybe single phase induction motor. So this type of machine are covered in the special machines. So we will be covering like, uh, like these are the like basic structure of the electrical machine. So on undergraduate level, we will be having the like basic functionality of these machines, how these machines work, and their operating principle and basic input output relations. On the postgraduate level, we will be having the modeling of this machine, like how we can mathematically model the, these machines. So let us start with the transformer and we will be discussing about the transformer from the very basic one. So this is the like general structure of the transformer. You have seen this this device like near to you. Sometimes it is uh, available in the like near to our homes so that, so let us discuss about what this transformer do. So this transformer simply used for the stepping up the voltage or stepping down the voltage. In the like distribution end, it is used at stepping down the voltage and in the like transmission side, it is used to step up the voltage. So simple, functionality of this uh, transformer is to step up the voltage or step down, down the voltage. Nothing change in the frequency or anything else. So it will be simply stepping up, like stepping up the voltage from the high voltage to low voltage in the distribution side. And in the transmission side, it will be uh, like uh, increasing the voltage from the low voltage to high voltage because we do the transmission on the high voltage level and we generate the voltages from at like around 11 kV or 6.6 kV in this kind of level voltage. And we have to transmit the voltage on the higher side, like 440 kV or 6, uh, 765 kV or 220 kV. So we have to step up the voltage for that. So we will be using the transformer for that step up process. And like, you know, we use the normal 230 volt supply in our uh, homes. So we will be stepping down for like, when we, after the transmission, when we have to use this uh, power, then we have to step down the voltage. So on the distribution side, we will be using transformer as a step down device. So this is the like 
basic structure in this you can see like this is the conservator tank this is the breather this is the low voltage process from where we will be taking the supply from the low voltage and this is the main tech in which we will be having the binding of the transformer along with the transformer oil and all those accessories this is the tank cover you can see and this is the cooling fins which are shown by this fins you can see like this is the cooling things which are used to cool down the transformer. So when we use the transformer, the transformer oil gets heated and this cooling tubes used to uh, cool down those transformer oils. And there is a drain off so that when you need to maintain the transformer, any maintenance work has to be done on the transformer, then this drain off is used as the, like uh, pull out the transformer oil from the transformer. So this is the, like a structure of the transformer. Uh, and if you look like basic what are inside the transformer, then uh, you can represent the transformer by this electrical circuit. And in this electrical circuit, you can look, there is a core which consists of the main flux which, by which the transformer will be working. So there is a core, rectangular core, which is uh, shown over here. So this is the core. And after that, this core will be consisting of the main flux of the transformer. And we have two windings. One is uh, primary winding and another is the secondary winding. So from prime, on the primary winding, we will be having suppose N1 turn and NP turns. And in the secondary winding, suppose we have the NS turn. So we will be having this uh, like general structure of the transformer. So we have represented it as an electrical circuit. So from input side, we will be giving the supply to the transformer. And the, on the output side, we will be getting the supply like, what we, we want to step up the voltage or step down the voltage. As per that, we will be getting the output. So input-output relation simply depends on these turns. So the, the input-output uh, voltage ratio is same as the turns ratio of this transformer. If you have the BP as an input and BS as an output, then we have like BP versus BS ratio is as same as the NS over NP. So BP over BS is same as the NS over uh, NP over NS. So same ratio what we are getting on the voltage uh, voltage side, the same, it is same as the turns ratio of the transformers. So here we have seen uh, like we have uh, represented the general structure of a single phase transformer and we have no, we know that the normal power system structure is uh, simple. Like if we take three single phase, such three phase single phase transformer and uh, make a three phase transformer, then uh, like it will be becoming the three phase transformer. So when we will be using three single phase transformer in the three phase transformer and connecting them in like we can connect the three single phase transformer in two way. One is the star connection and other is the delta connection. So when we will be connecting in it in either in the star or either in delta, then we will be getting the three phase transformers. So who can, who can step up or step down the voltage, three phase voltage from the uh, like high voltage to low, low voltage or low voltage to high voltage. So that is known as the step up transformer or step up of three phase transformer. So after this, uh, we have some more kind of transformer in the transformer that is auto transformer. Sometimes we use auto transformer when the voltage ratio from the input side and the output side is like uh, similar to one, when we have to not much increase or decrease the voltage ratio, then generally we use the auto transformer for that. The main purpose to use the auto transformer, there are uh, lots of like, uh, advantages to use the auto transformer over the two winding transformer. This word transformer is known as the two winding transformer. So when we use the auto transformer at the place of this two winding transformer, then we have uh, several advantages. Like we have some copper saving or some, there will be low losses in the auto transformer. So this, uh, this is one other kind of transformer, which is known as the auto transformer. But we use the auto transformer only when, when the voltage ratio between the input and output is somewhat around one, okay? So uh, era, apart from this auto transformer, we have some more connection in the uh, transformer like Scott connection, like open Delta connection. So these are the uh, connection which are depending on the transfer, like how we are connecting this single phase transformer in the three phase system. So um, on the basis of that, we have two more uh, type of transformer, which is like one is the Scott connection and 
second one is the open delta. So in the card connection, it is a simple strategy to convert the three phase system into the two phase system, which is displaced, the two phase system is displaced by the 90 degree from each other. So the in the start connection, we will be converting the three phase system into the two phase system. And in open delta, if we have like delta delta connected transformer in which the three single phase transformer are connected in delta in the primary side and three single phase transformers which are connected in the delta in the secondary side. And if we have one transformer gets damaged, then we can operate this damaged transformer by in the open delta connection so that the, it can uh, operate with the some reduced kind of load. So this is all about the open delta and the Scott connection. Apart from this, on the basis of this connection on the star and the delta connection on the primary and the secondary side, we have six different type of three phase transformers. So we can connect the primary side of the three phase transformers as a star and we uh, similarly we can connect it in the delta. So same as the primary side, we can uh, have the same connection on the secondary side also. So there will be also a delta or a star connection in the secondary. So this, uh, this uh, in this way, we have six kind of more uh, three phase transformer, which is having the different configuration in the primary and the secondary. So if we have the delta on the primary side and the delta on the secondary side, then we will be having the delta delta transformer. Oh, uh, or if we have like a star on the primary side and the delta in the secondary side, then we will be calling it as a star delta transformer. So on the basis of the connection in the primary and the secondary, we will be having the transformer. So this uh, three phase transformer having the various configuration on the based on, based on the configuration on which the primary side and the secondary side are connected. So, if we go in the deep discussion about the transformer, then we will be having the various kind of discussion, like how, how we can calculate the efficiency of the transformer, how we can calculate the regulation. So regulation is simply uh, like how much voltage is dropping from the input side to output side across the transformer elements. So uh, in the deep discussion, we have many kinds of numerical also. There are which are based on the efficiency, which may be based on the voltage regulation or may be based on the all the efficiency. So all these kind of uh, numerical will be covered in the transformer set. So let us move to the second device, which we will be normally using in the discussion of the uh, like electrical machine, which is the DC machines. So as the name uh, of this machine is the DC machine, so we can uh, know that this machine works on the DC power supply. So uh, DC machines are kind of two kind of things are there in the DC machine. One is the DC motor and other is the DC generator. So we will be having the armature binding on this uh, rotating part and we will be having the like, you can see like this is the general structure of the DC machine. So the outer structure is na uh, named as the frame or arc, and this is the field poles on which there will be the field winding. You can see the field winding or stationary, which is on the stator part and the armature winding on the rotating part. So this is the only device in which that we kept the armature winding on the rotating part. If you look into other rotating device like induction motor and the synchronous machine and the induction machine, then the armature binding is on the stator part. So this is the only machine in which the armature winding is on the rotating part. Because here we will be handling a little bit lower voltage. That's why we can keep the armature voltage on the rotating part, okay? So you can see these are the field poles. Field poles may be made of the permanent magnet or it will be made of the DC supply. So on the basis of this, you can see like there is some commutator so commutator is used at the, to convert the AC because the armature will be uh, producing the AC supply on the armature binding. So these commutator are help to uh, pull out the supply like supply from the armature binding and convert it into the DC from the AC. This is the soft you can see, and this is this is known as the pole suit, which is the outer structure of the pole. So if we talk about the DC machine, uh, structure of the DC machine, then we have also uh, a lots of kind of the DC machine based on the connection between the series, uh, like field binding and the armature binding. You can see like we have two type kind of bindings. One is the armature binding and other is the field binding. So on the basis of the 
the connection of this field winding and the armature winding, we have different, different kind of DC machine. So if we connect the series, field winding and the armature winding in the series, then it is known as the series DC machine. It can be generator or it can be motor. If you connect the supply across the armature of this machine, then it will be running and connect some load on the mode, like soft of this machine, then it will be running as a motor. If you run the soft of the machine by some kind of like prime mover and take the output from the armature, then it will be running as a motor. So if on the, I was talking about the different kind of connection between the field winding and the, this uh, armature winding. So on the basis of that, there will be a lots of kind of the series uh, like DC machines. So if we connect the field winding and the armature winding in the series, then it is known as the series motor. And if we connect it as a, uh, like this field winding across the armature winding, like the uh, in the parallel to the armature winding, then it is known as the sunt, sunt DC machine. So it can be a sunt DC motor or it can be sunt is like DC generator. So if we give the uh, separate power supply across the field winding, then it is known as the separately excited machine, DC machine. So there will be two kinds of separately excited DC machine. One is a separately excited motor and second one will be the separately excited generator. So there are two more kind of uh, like connection in this DC machine. One is the long sun and one will be short sun. So these are also two kind of connection that will be depending upon the type of the connection. So on the basis of this connection, we have a lots of kind of numerical also in this DC machine. Like we have to be maybe asked to calculate the speed of the machine. We may be asked to calculate the internal voltage or torque or power or efficiency. So there is lots of kind of numerical also covered under the DC machine. Like we have to calculate the efficiency of the machine, torque calculation, speed calculation, or maybe it will be internal voltage that is back EMF calculation. So this, uh, uh, like this is whole about the DC motor, DC machine. And apart from this like calculations, we have some kind of speed control in the DC machines also. So in that speed control, we, we will try to control the speed of the machine by various procedures. So we have a lots of kind of procedure in which we can have like a series uh, variation speed control or maybe uh, armature voltage speed control or maybe three point like there are lots of kind of speed controller also which is known as the three point or four point con speed controller so uh, if we go in the speed control of the dc machine then there will be a lots of method by which we can control the speed of the dc machine so in the speed control there will be some kind of numerical also will be there so these numericals also covered under the speed control of the DC machine. Apart from the speed control, we have some kind of braking uh, also covered in the DC machine by which we can break the DC machine. So there will be some three or four kind of uh, braking in the DC machine. Like one is the regenerating braking, another is the reostative braking, one maybe plugging. So this kind of braking is also covered under braking. So there will be some kind of numerical also will be there in the braking section. So this is all about the DC machine. Let us move uh, toward the third machine, which is uh, like uh, covered under this electrical machine slavers, which is known as the induction machine. So this is the uh, like one more important part of the electrical machine. So in the induction machine, if you see uh, around you, the, all the motor which will be running around you will be induction motor because the motors are generally the induction motor, induction kind of motor because of this robust design of this induction motor. So, so induction machine is the very much compact and the robust device. So that's why we will using it as a, uh, like most of the motor will be using this induction machine as a like main part of the motor. So maybe in some kind of special application, we will be having the DC motors or maybe synchronous motor, but most of the cases you will find that the, uh, like all the motor will consider this induction machine as a principal element. So in the induction machine, if you see, like I have shown the general structure of the induction machine. So there will be a fan for the cooling of this armature and the rotor winding. And we have armature winding. I have told you apart from the, uh, like except from the DC machine, we have none other uh, machine which will be having the armature winding on the rotating parts. So same like on that 
you can see like the armature binding is on the stator part which is which will be stationary and the rotor binding will be on the rotating part so this is the shaft you can see on which we will be putting the rotor binding so rotor binding simply will be the three phase but it will be short circuited on the both ended so this the rotor binding will be the simple three phase binding which will be the short circuited by the like a brass bar or something like that so you can see the armature binding is on the stator part. We will be connecting the supply to the armature binding and the motor start working. So when we run it as an electrical motor, then we will be giving the three phase or single phase supply on the, as per the, like if the induction motor is the three phase, then we will be giving the three phase supply to the armature binding. And when the induction motor will be the single phase, then we will be giving the single phase supply to the uh, armature binding. So. The arm when we connect the armature binding with a three phase or single phase supply, then it produces the rotating uh, MMF across this air gap, which is presented over this like uh, rotor binding. So when you connect the three phase winding to the armature winding, three phase supply to the armature winding, then there will be a rotating magnetic field, which will be produced by this three phase armature winding and it will be around this rotor circuit. So this is the operating principle how like this induction machine operates. So when this rotating magnetic field will be uh, developed in this uh, air gap area, so the three, uh, there will be a three phase winding on the rotor also. So there will be a EMF induct induced in this rotor winding. And this, these two, when these two, uh, and there will be some MMF also produced by this rotor winding also as per the Faraday induction law. So these, when these two MMF interacts, then there will be some trot production which will be applied on this rotor part. So on this, uh, in such way, there will be some torque production and uh, uh, like this will be the operating principle of the induction machine. So if you look into this is the like cross section of this induction machine, you can see like there will be a soft and on the soft we have rotor winding and on the stator part we have the stator winding. So <clears throat> this is all about the operating principle of the induction machine. So if you look into the what will be the what will be the things which will be covered under this induction machine so we will be will be will be drawing the equivalent uh, circuit uh, for this like equivalent circuit or uh, for all those uh, machine as per we have done for all those machine same as here we will be drawing the equivalent circuit of this induction machine in which we will be replacing the armature circuit and like the stator circuit and the rotor circuit uh, with their electrical counterparts. So we will be for our analysis, like we can't do the analysis to buy this mechanical part. So for that, we have to, we have to change this complete sick thing into the electrical thing. So we will be drawing the equivalent electrical circuit uh, like for this complete system and we will be doing all the analysis for this. So there will be some kind of efficiency calculation, some kind of slip calculation, maybe some kind of torque calculation. So these torque efficiency and slip and all those calculation will be covered under this induction machine numerical. So there will be a lot of kind of numerical related to the induction machine. After that, the operating principle Apart from this, we have the speed control for the induction machines. So like when we will be using the induction machine as a motor, then we will require the speed control for that motor. So for that speed control, we have a lot of kind of speed controller also for the induction motor. So we will be having such kind of like armature voltage control and the DYF control. So there will be a lot of method by which we can control the uh, like speed of this motor. So there will be some kind of numericals also will be there on the waste of the this speed control. So after this induction machine, we will move on the fourth machine, which will be covered ex like exclusively within this machine course, which is known as the synchronous machine. I have told you like synchronous machine are generally used as the electrical generator. So we will be talking everything in the synchronous machine in the aspect of the electrical generator. So the synchronous machine are mainly two types. One is the cylindrical rotor and other is the uh, like, uh, this is the like uh, shown over here. It is the cylinder like uh, salient port motor. So I have told uh, like synchronous machine is simply two type. One is the cylindrical rotor synchronous machine and other is the salient pole synchro synchronous machine. So this will be depending on the how the poles are there 
like keel winding are there it will be depending on that so uh, in the same way which we have discussed in the induction machine the armature winding in the synchronous machine is also presented over the stator so armature winding will be the on the stator part and the rotor winding which will be presented on the rotor part so on the basis of this rotor structure the synchronous machine i have told you it is of two type one is the salient pole and other is the cylindrical so on the basis of the structure of the this rotor the synchronous machine will be of two type one is the uh, like salient pole and other is the cylindrical so here it is the structure of the salient pole synchronous machine so salient pole synchronous machines are like simply low speed generators so we use these generator in the hydropower industry and the cylindrical um, cylindrical pole synchronous machine these are normally used in the like as a turbo generator as a steam turbine because the speed of this cylindrical uh, generator which having the lesser number of poles is high so speed due to the higher speed operation of this cylindrical pole generator we will be using it as a steam generator and that uh, salient pole generator are generally used in the hydropower generation so you can see like this is the simply two pole rotor which is having the rotor winding on the rotor. So one more difference between the induction motor and the synchronous induction machine and the synchronous machine is that on the on the rotor winding, we will be having the single phase winding. In the induction machine, we was having the uh, three phase winding on the more like a stator and the armature and the rotor. But here we will be having the three phase winding on the uh, armature, but we will be having the simply single phase winding on the rotor. And we will be giving the simple dc supply to the field winding of the rotor so this field like dc supply will induce some dc field across the air gap of the this generator and when we rotate the uh, state rotor of this synchronous machine then when this constant field will rotate with the speed of this uh, rotor field then it will be having the rotating kind of nature and it will introduce some rotating uh, like uh, mmf across the air gap and by this rotating MMF, there will be some voltage induction within these three winding and we will be getting three phase supply on the stator of this synchronous machine. So this is how we can like uh, analyze the synchronous machine. And in this synchronous machine, we will be also having some kind of efficiency and voltage regulation calculation. And we will be having the lots of equation also based on which we will be calculating the power output, reactive power, active power output of the synchronous machine. And apart from this, uh, this calculation, we will be having the power control in this synchronous machine. So like we will be using, I have told you, we will be using as a mainly gen electrical generator. So it is very important that we have some kind of discussion on the power side. So we will be discussing the various power expression, like what will be the power output of this machine on the basis of this, like power angle and all those things. So there will be a lots of numerical also will be there on the basis of the power calculation. So this is all about the synchronous machine. And if you go into the like uh, segregate between the synchronous motor and the synchronous generator, then the synchronous motor, if you talk about, then synchronous motor are not the self-starting motor because there will be no starting torque in the presented in the synchronous motor. So that's why we will be having some kind of auxiliary things by, by which we can start the synchronous motor in the starting. So synchronous motor are generally used as the power factor correction, correction in the industry. So uh, normally these are used as the power factor correctors. Okay, so this is all about the structure of the DC machine, like uh, complete electrical machine course in which we will be discussing it's mainly four kind of machine. One is the transformer, second one is the DC machine, third one is the induction machine, and the fourth one will be the synchronous machine. After that, we will be having some kind of special machines also. We will be not discussing those machines here. And let me show you a basic uh, like uh, example of the induction machine. So if you... Okay, so this is the all about the general structure of the all the machine which is covered under the electrical machines curriculum. And after that, we will be going into the deep of the electrical machines. So for that, let me show you the power flow diagram for the induction machine. So for that, that uh, you can see like this is the uh, induction machine. 
uh, equivalent circuit which we are talking about like we will be converting the whole mechanical thing into the electrical model so this is the thing uh, electrical thing which we will be converting from the induction machines so this is the equivalent circuit of the induction machine in which we have some kind of primary uh, primary resistances and the reactances and the secondary resistances and the re reactances and some kind of like these are the equivalent of the that core part so this represent the like how the like flux is generated in the electrical machine this induction machine so let me show you the power flow diagram from the induction machine so if you give some three phase input to the electrical machine then you have you will be giving the three vt il cos theta as a input to this induction machine so this is the moen power input to the induction machine after that when you will give this power input to the electrical machine then there will be some stator copper loss from this input side so there will be some stator copper loss and and there will be some coal losses also into the stator so if you subtract the these uh, stator copper loss and the coal losses from the uh, input supply input power then you will be getting as the air gap power which is like transfer from the state like uh, armature to the rotor so this is known as the air gap power or it can be denoted by the pag so when you will be getting the air gap power and you will be subtracting the rotor copper loss from that then you will be getting the p developed which will be the power developed by the induction motor like here we are uh, like talking in the concept context of the induction motor so we will be get, getting the power developed and we can denote it by the p con okay so after that when we will be getting the power power developed by the induction machine after that if you subtract the that power that uh, if you subtract this friction and the bindage losses which will be happening in the motor and you subtract that this power from the power developed then you will be getting the which will be the and uh, this also you have to subtract this stray power loss like miscellaneous kind of power loss will be there in the machine so if you subtract this quantity from that uh, de power developed by the machine then you will be getting the final power output of the induction machine and the final power output is also denoted by the torque into the speed of the motor so this is the kind of power flow diagram which will be there in the induction machine so these are the this is very important thing for the analysis of the induction machine so let us move to the numerical which is based on the induction machines so you will find this kind of numerical which will be there in the induction machines so uh, structure of the uh, like numerical in the induction machine will be such kind like they will be giving the supply voltage some kind of power rating and some kind of like uh, typical frequency of that system like on which the system will be running they will be giving the frequency and they will be also giving the number of poles if they give the structure of the machine then they will also give the number of poles so we have the four pole machine which will be running on 460 volt supply and the rating of the machine is the simply 50 hp so this hash power is also a rating of lock top uh, measurement of the power so this is the uh, the rating of the machine and the y connected means like the stator winding is the connected in the y y star connection so the stator is the connected in the star and the following impedance is like they have given the i have shown you the equivalent circuit of the induction motor so they have given the parameter of that equivalent circuit like r1 r r1 x1 that is the leakage like r1 is the stator binding resistance and x1 is the leakage inductance of that stator binding and this r2 is the resistance of the rotor binding and this x2 is the leakage re re reactance of the rotor binding and we have some kind of this xm as a 26 point Three. This is known as the magnetizing inductance. So the, here it is uh, written in the reactance form. So it will be the magnetizing reactance. So here what we have to find out, like there will be lots of kind of uh, numerical will be there in which like they can ask for the maximum torque of the motor and what, at what speed the this maximum torque occur. And they they have asked about the starting torque and they have asked when the rotor resistance is double, what is the speed at which the maximum torque occurs now. So this kind of numerical will be there in the induction machine. So let us see about the solutions. So uh, 
using that uh, equivalent circuit, we can apply the Themenin theorem across that equivalent circuit. So we will be finding out this Themenin voltage for that, and we will be finding out the Themenin resistance for that. So we, we are getting the 255.2 volt as the Themenin voltage, and uh, this much of the resistance as a Themenin resistance. So we have replaced that equivalent, uh, equivalent uh, circuit of the induction motor with the Themenin equivalent of the circuit. So from that, we, be, we can get the S max for that. So formula for S max is given as this, like we can be this uh, discussion we will be having in the course calculum. So this is the formula for the S max. And from this, we will be getting the maximum slip at which the maximum torque occurs, okay? So after that, we can calculate the maximum torque also by this formula. So when we apply this formula, then we will be getting the maximum torque for that. And also we can calculate the uh, speed on that slip on which the maximum torque occurs. So this is the slip uh, like speed on which this maximum torque will be happening. So this much of maximum torque we are getting like 229 Newton per meter, Newton meter for the, like, like this will be the maximum torque from the machine. So after that we have to, find out the starting top of the, of the machine and we know the starting uh, for the starting of the motor we will be having slip equals to one so this kind of like we have to replace the slip in this expression by s equals to one then we will be getting the starting torque so this is the starting torque which we will be getting like this is the 104 newton meter in the starting so now uh, in the like third part of the question we have to uh, increase the rotor resistance, that is uh, rotor resistance has been doubled. And now we have to find out that S and all those things on this condition when the rotor resistance is doubled. So say in the, as the same analysis, which we have done already, like this R2 is has been doubled in the second case, then you have to put the uh, new value of R2 and you will be getting the new value of slip on which the maximum torque occur, the new value of the speed on which maximum torque occur and the new value of the maximum torque also. So on this bill way, you can calculate all those value for this change rotor resistance. And uh, this is all about this numerical. So if you have any doubt, any kind of uh, help you need regarding the assignment or you need some kind of tutorial, then you can contact to our community. So we are from the, your own teacher community. You can contact us directly from this and you will be getting uh, all kind of help regarding these things. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining this session.